This was the last time we saw it. Saturn, veiled in shadow, while a spacecraft, millions of kilometers from Earth, dove straight into its atmosphere. It wasn't an accident. It was a planned death. But why destroy one of the most advanced spacecraft ever built? And what did it see just moments before disintegrating forever? What you're about to witness are the final images humanity will ever see of Saturn, captured by a machine that died to show them to us. In 2017, the Cassini spacecraft began the final act of its legendary mission, a series of 22 daring dives between Saturn and its rings. NASA called it the grand finale. It was risky, it was never attempted before, and it changed everything. Each orbit took Cassini into a region no spacecraft had ever entered, a 2,000 kilometer wide gap between the innermost ring and the top of Saturn's atmosphere. It was like threading a needle at 120,000 kilometers per hour. One wrong calculation, one stray particle, and the mission would be over instantly. But Cassini didn't just survive, it thrived. As it danced between Saturn's rings and clouds, Cassini captured data we never imagined we'd see. It measured the planet's gravitational field with unprecedented precision, helping scientists map Saturn's internal structure. It discovered that the rings are much younger than the planet, likely no more than 100 million years old and possibly temporary. And then came the images. Cassini sent back views of Saturn's auroras, glowing faintly at the poles. It revealed vertical structures in the rings, particles leaping more than three kilometers high, pulled by the planet's magnetic field. And it took the most detailed shots yet of Saturn's north pole vortex, a churning six-sided storm over 30,000 kilometers wide. This hexagon isn't a coincidence, it's a stable jet stream. No other planet has anything like it, and it's been spinning there, untouched, since at least the Voyager flybys in the 1980s. But the closer Cassini got, the more the risks multiplied. It was flying blind through regions filled with tiny ring particles, most smaller than grains of sand, but still deadly at high velocity. The grand finale wasn't just a final orbit, it was a controlled fall a spiral toward destruction, designed not as an end, but as a way to go deeper than ever before. While Saturn took center stage, one of its moons quietly stole the spotlight, Enceladus. At just 500 kilometers wide, Enceladus seemed unremarkable at first, a frozen world, silent, icy, dead. But Cassini noticed something no one expected strange plumes erupting from cracks in its southern hemisphere. These weren't simple geysers. They were jets of water vapor, ice particles, and organic compounds shooting hundreds of kilometers into space. They were coming from beneath the surface. Cassini flew directly through them, not once, but multiple times. And what it found changed the mission's entire direction. Inside those plumes were signs of a global ocean trapped beneath an icy shell. The ocean is liquid, salty, and possibly warmed by tidal forces, the constant push and pull from Saturn's immense gravity. Cassini detected molecular hydrogen, a key ingredient for microbial life. It also found carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, and even complex organic molecules the chemical building blocks of biology. On Earth, similar conditions exist at hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor, places where sunlight never reaches, yet life thrives. Could Enceladus host something similar? Scientists don't know, not yet. But Enceladus instantly became one of the most promising places in the solar system to search for life. And those towering plumes? They didn't just vanish. Over time, they contributed to something much larger, the creation of Saturn's E-ring, a delicate halo of icy particles, barely visible unless backlit by the sun. 
Cassini even measured the composition of the E-ring and found that it matches what it saw in the plumes. In a way, Enceladus isn't just orbiting Saturn, it's reshaping it. On September 11, 2017, just four days before the end, Cassini reached the farthest point of its final orbit. From this silent perch, it turned its cameras back toward Saturn and captured a breathtaking mosaic. This wasn't just a photograph, it was a farewell portrait, a panoramic view of Saturn and its magnificent ring system in natural light. In the image, you can see all the major rings, D, C, B, A, and F, each with different densities, textures, and stories. Saturn cast a short, sharp shadow across the rings, like a blade slicing through space. The northern hemisphere of Saturn was tilted toward the sun. It was summer there, which meant something extraordinary. The hexagon storm at Saturn's north pole, a six-sided jet stream, was lit up in perfect clarity. Cassini captured it spinning silently, its geometry still defying full scientific explanation. And if you look closely at the mosaic, you'll notice something unexpected. The night side of Saturn is glowing. Why? Because sunlight reflects off the rings, bouncing back and softly illuminating the planet's dark side. Even Saturn's night is never truly dark. Below that faint glow, the planet drops into pitch black, a haunting reminder of just how massive and mysterious this world truly is. Cassini had taken thousands of photos during its mission, but this one, this mosaic, felt different, like the final page of a cosmic photo album. On September 12, 2017, just three days before its destruction, Cassini once again slipped beneath Saturn's rings and turned its gaze toward something that had rarely been captured in detail the planet's own atmosphere, right at the edge of day and night. This border is known as the Terminator Line, a twilight zone where shadows stretch and forms become exaggerated. It's here, in this low sunlight, that Cassini revealed something extraordinary. Massive cloud structures, floating high in Saturn's upper atmosphere, cast shadows that stretched for tens even hundreds of kilometers. It was like watching colossal mountains drift through a golden dusk. And here's the stunning part. The region shown in the image spans over 5,500 kilometers. That's wide enough to fit Saturn's moon Titan, the second largest moon in the solar system, entirely within the frame. These weren't flat clouds. They had depth, height, and vertical reach. Cassini captured their shadows bending and distorting across curved atmospheric layers, painting Saturn's skies in dramatic contrasts of light and dark. This wasn't just beautiful, it was scientifically revolutionary. For the first time, we could measure the vertical thickness of Saturn's cloud layers by studying the length and angle of their shadows. This helped researchers estimate wind speeds, thermal behavior, and even the altitude of specific cloud types, something previously only guessed at. And remember, this isn't a solid planet. There's no ground. What you're seeing are floating gas storms, suspended in a sea of hydrogen and helium, spiraling in an atmosphere that may extend for tens of thousands of kilometers. Even more intriguing, the shape and alignment of the shadows hinted at jet streams and sheared turbulence, much like the kind we observe in Earth's own upper atmosphere, but on a scale that dwarfs anything we've ever known. Cassini didn't just give us a close-up of Saturn's clouds. It showed us that weather, in most alien parts of the solar system, still follows patterns we can begin to understand. From a distance, Saturn looks serene a graceful planet with delicate rings. But up close, it's a churning, violent giant. And Cassini saw it from the inside. On September 13th, just 48 hours before the end, 
Cassini turned its cameras towards something deceptively small, a tiny moon called Daphnis. At just 8 kilometers wide, Daphnis could easily go unnoticed. But its role within the Saturnian system is anything but minor. Daphnis is what astronomers call a shepherd moon. It orbits within a narrow gap in Saturn's A-ring, a region known as the Keeler Gap, only about 40 kilometers wide. Its gravity acts like a gatekeeper, maintaining the structure of the rings by pulling and tugging on nearby particles. What Cassini captured was nothing short of mesmerizing. As Daphnis glides through the gap, its gravitational influence creates ripples, like waves in a pond. But these aren't water waves. They're waves made of ice and rock following orbital mechanics at immense speed. And here's the strange part. These ripples appear both in front of and behind the moon. Why? Because the particles in the ring move at different speeds. The inner edge of the gap orbits faster than Daphnis, while the outer edge orbits slower. So when Daphnis passes by, it pulls the particles differently on each side, creating asymmetric wave patterns that lead and trail the moon. These waves aren't permanent. They gradually smooth out until Daphnis passes again, repeating the dance. And it's not just beautiful, it's physics in motion. What you're seeing is a visual expression of Kepler's laws of motion, drawn into the ring of Saturn. Even more astonishing, the waves reach 1.5 kilometers in height, towering above the flat plane of the rings. Cassini's cameras revealed this in incredible detail, giving us insight into how gravity sculpts structure, not just in rings, but in galaxies, disks around newborn stars, and even in planetary formation. It's like seeing cosmic fingerprints, gravity leaving its mark. Daphnis may be small, but its presence is mighty. And in this moment, just two days before its own destruction, Cassini paused to admire it, capturing the elegant chaos of a moon and a ring in eternal conversation. September 14th, 2017. Cassini had just one day left. At this point, the spacecraft had completed over 290 orbits around Saturn. It had flown past its moons hundreds of times. It had mapped, measured, tasted, and watched. And now, it looked back, one last time. What it saw wasn't dramatic. There were no explosions, no final transmissions of bright flares or epic storms. But it was quiet and haunting and unforgettable. Cassini turned to Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, a world cloaked in a thick orange haze. It had been one of the mission's top priorities from the start the only moon in the solar system with a dense atmosphere and one filled with methane clouds and rain. On this final pass, Cassini could no longer dive into Titan's surface, but from orbit, it captured a subtle glowing curve, a silhouette of a world that may once have resembled early Earth. Then it looked to Enceladus, the icy moon that had astonished the world with its jets of water Cassini tracked it for 40 minutes, watching as it drifted behind Saturn's massive body and vanished from sight. That was the last time Cassini would see Enceladus, the last time anyone would for a long time. And finally, Cassini turned towards Saturn itself. It focused on a region of the planet's night side, an area that in less than 24 hours would become its grave. There were no lights. No landmarks, just a faint glow. Sunlight reflected off the rings, bouncing down into the darkness. That glow was enough for Cassini's cameras to see the scene. But it was also a reminder, this planet is vast. And what happens beneath its cloud tops, we may never truly know. This final image, this quiet, shadowy glimpse of Saturn's night, was the last photo Cassini ever took. From that moment on, there would be no more pictures, no more panoramas, 
only data. Because on its final day, Cassini would no longer look. It would listen, measure, and transmit until the very end. September 15, 2017. After nearly 20 years in space, Cassini was no longer just observing Saturn, it was becoming a part of it. At exactly 6.31 UTC, the spacecraft began its final descent. It entered the upper atmosphere of Saturn at a speed of over 123,000 kilometers per hour. But this wasn't a crash, it was a controlled sacrifice. Cassini had just enough fuel left to fire its thrusters, not to escape, but to keep its high-gain antenna locked onto Earth for as long as possible. NASA engineers wanted to squeeze every bit of data from its final moments, not images, but real-time measurements of Saturn's atmosphere. At 1,900 kilometers above the cloud tops, Cassini began sending back information. Atmospheric density, molecular composition, magnetic field behavior, ionized particles, tiny grains of ring dust. The spacecraft was flying into uncharted territory, the kind of data no probe had ever sent before from within a gas giant. But Saturn was relentless. Within just over a minute, the increasing pressure and friction became too much. Cassini's thrusters fired at maximum power, fighting to stay upright, but the forces were too strong. It began to tumble, losing orientation. Its antenna drifted off target. And just like that, the signal went silent. Back on Earth, 1.4 billion kilometers away, Mission Control received Cassini's final heartbeat. A faint carrier wave, then nothing. The spacecraft disintegrated in Saturn's skies, turning to vapor in an atmosphere it had spent 13 years studying. But this death wasn't tragic. It was intentional, and it was necessary. Cassini carried Earth microbes, and scientists feared the possibility of contaminating moons like Enceladus or Titan worlds that might host life. So instead of risking that, Cassini was sent into Saturn to protect the future of exploration. Its final act wasn't destruction, it was preservation. A mission that began in the late 1990s ended in 2017. With one final burst of knowledge, one last dive into the unknown, and one eternal place in human history. Cassini is gone. But what it gave us is still unfolding. Even now, years after its destruction, scientists are still publishing papers using the data it sent back. Its discoveries redefined what we know about planetary systems, moons with oceans, and even the potential for life beyond Earth. Enceladus became a target, Titan became a mystery, and Saturn, once just a distant gas giant, became a world of complex weather, invisible storms, and haunting beauty. And we're not done yet. In 2028, NASA will launch Dragonfly, a drone designed to fly across Titan's surface, hopping from site to site like a robotic explorer, looking for chemical clues and maybe something more. Cassini may be silent now, but its mission echoes forward in every future spacecraft, in every planetary dream, in every image we've ever seen of the giant with rings. It didn't just observe a planet, it changed how we see our place in the cosmos. And if this story moved you, if it made you look up at the night sky just a little differently, there's another journey waiting for you. Watch this next video, it might just change what you think you know about the universe because space has only just started speaking.